This is an hybrid IAM. The reason is quite simple. It's actually an earphone with a rubber tube right here. So this rubber tube right here has some dot matrix design right here and a little small ear fin that helps to lock at the outer part of the ear. With this design, it channels the sound into your ear canal. This is nothing new. A lot of other sports brands also do the similar concept. With this setup, definitely the sound isolation is there but quite minimum. You could say that this characteristic of this hybrid IM is an open back, meaning you will be much more alert of your surroundings so you will not be knocked down by a motorbike or bus in the city if you're doing the jogging. Now this baby right here has an IPX4 rating meaning it's sweat and water resistance. After a quick activity, you can actually rinse with water to make it clean. The package comes included with one additional size ear tip, the micro USB cable for charging and also a carrying holder for the hybrid IEM. I wish Sony included a cable management tab to shorten the cable because during high intensive activity like running, the cable do dangle left and right quite a bit. All the controls and the charging is located on the right side. The top of the tube where you open it is where you have the micro USB port for charging. On the bottom is your power button, your media control as well as your call function. Actuating it is easy, you just pinch the tube like this. On the back is your volume rocker being the plus on top and the minus volume on the bottom. Let's say if you have multiple Android devices pairing through Bluetooth 4.2 or NFC, you can just use the NFC function like this and you're good to go. Now this baby's right here is using a pair of 13.5mm neodymium dynamic drivers. The maximum stable connectivity line of sight is 11 meters from our testing. Now the rated battery life is 8 hours for this hybrid IMs. Based on our test using the iPhone 6 at the 5th volume bar, we managed to get 8 hours and 15 minutes. Now for audio quality test. For pop and EDM, I choose TNB OK. The low bass frequency is highly energetic, punchy and well body. But I feel it's like pullback, it feels safe, it's not showing its true potential despite being a bigger dynamic driver which is 13.5mm. Now aside from that, the low bass frequency does not eat into the vocal or cause any muffling at the vocals and there is no distortion even you bump the volume slightly higher. All I can say that the subtle bass vibration at the bass fade ends a little bit quickly for my taste. For Pia Mia, do it again, the bass is well body and has the right energy to it. Sadly, at the 2 minute and the 5 second mark, the subtle bass vibration ends a little bit quickly for my taste. The good news is the bass does not eat or muffle the vocals. For vocals and instrumentals, I choose violin, the raindrop, the piano and the violin tone has the right amount of sharpness at the high frequency for this hybrid IAM. But this leans towards the warm sounding tone rather than the sharp crystal clear type that I prefer but it's still good in my book. It sounds decent. Now I can say that the bass and the drum slightly overpowers the piano and the violin tones but there's a clear separation between the two. There's no muffling sound. Next is Patatonic C2. When it comes to Mitch Grass's high pitch male tenor voice, it performs well at the high frequency but it needs more shine to sound sharper. When it comes to the group vocals, every singer can be identified easily, every diction and pronunciation is crystal clear, and when it comes to vocal humming and beatboxing is eargasm, I would say when it comes to vocals or the mid-range, it performs 100% good. Now, let me sum it up. This IM is good when it comes to the low frequency to the upper mids. If they introduce a little bit more shine at the high frequency, it performs well at the highs. I would say this is somewhat a balanced IM as most sports IM in the market emphasize only the low frequency or the bass region and rarely touch the mid-range mid where clarity is needed. Sony got it covered here and they perform well. So if you're interested in this product, links in the video description below and if you're interested in noise cancelling, there will be two more reviews which is the SP600N and SP700N which we will link in the video description or just subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of that video once it's uploaded. Remember to like this video, comment below what other products we should review next and let me know where you're from. I want to know where my fans are from, my viewers are from. Remember to like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video. Yeah, which is also a Sony.